one of our great lawyers. Uh, I like to consider him the African for the African Opportunities in African Lawyer. Because uh, I was told, I went to school uh, for business four years, and I was told when I first started business that two things I need uh, to have a successful business to start it off, a lawyer and an accountant. Uh, so I believe that then, I believe it now, because my lawyer here in Ghana has really guided me and protected me and helped me in many areas. Uh, and certainly, I don't know law, even though I thought I did. So at this time, I'd like to bring forth uh, our lawyer, Brother Kula Gurdu. Thank you very much, Kevin. It's a great pleasure to be back here. I was here two years ago talking to many people like yourselves who were coming to Ghana. And it's interesting because the Ghanaian economy wasn't actually doing as well two years ago as it is now. I came back to Ghana from the UK, having been born in the US. I lived in the UK for 30 years, um, having left Ghana at the age of 10. And when I came back, Ghana was actually struggling. We had what we call dumso, electricity going off at least once a day, sometimes for 48 hours, sometimes for even longer. And Ghana was really struggling. But now if you look in the newspapers, you look at what the media is saying, Africa is on the rise. And we have the fastest growing economies in the world on this continent. But I would say that Ghana has actually risen to the top because Ghana is, by some accounts, the fastest growing economy on the African continent. So it's a wonderful time for you to be here. You're really, really welcome to this stunning country. Um, a couple of years ago, I was also talking about some of the risks of investing, but I want to turn it into a positive this time and look at some of the opportunities. And I'm actually going to do something different as well. We've heard from a lot of eminent gentlemen on this panel. Um, I want to introduce you to one of my brightest and younger lawyers in my practice, Akosu Akranchi. And actually, I'm going to ask her to talk to us about some of the opportunities and indeed some of the challenges as well um, with doing business in Ghana, investing in Ghana, moving to Ghana from abroad. Our firm is called Egality Law, and the firm is, I'm happy to say, acting for some of Ghana's biggest businesses, some of the bigger investors coming into Ghana, and also some of the smaller businesses as well. We act for an organization called the Human Rights Ad Ad Advocacy Center, which is a very small NGO dealing with mental health issues, children issues. We also act for one of the largest exporters in Ghana, a company called Blue Skies who in, in, uh, export fruits and agri-products um, to the UK and to Europe, to some of the biggest supermarkets abroad. We have an amazing breadth of clients. We do a lot of advocacy work ourselves. We do a lot of anti-corruption work, a lot of human rights work. But what really excites us is people who come to invest in small Ghanaian businesses and turn those businesses into something really exciting. So on that note, I'm going to hand over to Mami who will talk about some of the opportunities in that area. Thank you. Thank you very much, Corey. Um, as he mentioned, I am a young lawyer and I joined Egality not long ago, but Egality is a young but excellent firm. What we do is we have excellent client service we also tailor our legal services to suit the individual needs of our clients. Um, I think one of the things you would be considering coming to Ghana is probably setting up companies. Um, there are different ways by which you can do this. You can have companies limited by shares, companies limited by guarantees, or you can have external companies. The legal regime to set up a company is fairly simple. Um, the RGD process is easy to navigate. The Registrar General, 
I'm sorry, I use the hyphenated term, but the Registered Journals Department, where you actually register a company, is a very, it's fairly easy to navigate. But to ensure that when you are founding your company, you follow the necessary regulatory steps, it's usually good to ensure that you have a lawyer who takes you through what you're supposed to do. There are sometimes a lot of middlemen. And what the middlemen do is they take money. Uh, they sometimes say that they are setting up the firms or the companies, but they do not do that. So to set up a company, it would be good to have um, lawyers to let you know what your needs are if you want to make profit. Perhaps you would like to establish a company limited by shares. If you want to form an association, do not profit work or engage in some kind of legal entity where you don't want to make profit. You might want to um, establish a company limited by guarantee. Um, apart from the RGD, the Registered Journals Department, there are other legal um, or statutory institutes or institutions that have been set up that you would have to engage either even if not setting up a business perhaps immigration or your taxes or with land as um, the gentleman very excellently laid out um, but with let's say for instance when you are purchasing land you need somebody Aside from doing the due diligence, you need somebody to draft the terms of engagement to ensure that your interests are adequately protected. And in all those instances, you need a lawyer. Um, I would say that it's important to have somebody who will be held accountable professionally for what they do for you, than to have people who, uh, well, will not be held accountable, either legally or otherwise, in the event that they do not do the right thing. Um, so apart from that, citizenship, for instance, in the event that you stay here for a while and you, you determine that I love Ghana, uh, which we all do. Yes. We all studied outside, but we all came back, you know, because there's no place like home. Right. If you want to become a citizen, you want to naturalize, we will guide you will provide you with all the information and the requirements you need to make yourself a proud value. Um, I think I'll leave it here and if there are any questions we'll be happy to answer. Well I'm thankful um, and I'm sure that um, if you have questions for them. Um, the next brother I want to introduce